Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Akalon here, and welcome back to each and every one of you. I have some exciting news, and uh, speculation will abound as a result of this news. We may have been misled. They may have lied to us. They may have said that there will be no time skip, but that is not true. There seems to be information in the game that suggests a time skip isn't only plausible or possible, but that it has already happened. Anyways, we're going to be talking about all of that and more in today's video. Remember, you can be one of the cool people on the screen right now by becoming a patron, a YouTube channel member, or a Twitch sub. If you want to join us live on Twitch, Patreon, or YouTube, you can hit the links in the description down below. Ladies and gentlemen, strap in, because it's getting wild in here. So there is a conversation between Master Matthias Shaw and Greymane. The conversation goes as follows. King Greymane, I thought you should know. Raffian asked if there's been any word from Anduin. He asked me the same question. Though their friendship has been strained, I know the king considers Raffian an ally. Several years have passed since Azeroth's heroes returned from the realms of death. In that time, I followed up on countless leads, reports that the king was sighted here or there. None of them have proven true. I do not think that we will find Anduin until he wishes to be found. That may take some time. Turalyon is, popu is popular with the nobles, and he's a natural leader to our soldiers, but the people of Stormwind miss their king. The best that any of us can do is to give Anduin the time he needs, and to be here for him whenever he comes home. This is the conversation between Matthias Shaw and Greymane. Note that Greymane, or Matthias Shaw, explains that several years have passed since the heroes of Azeroth have filtered through the portal coming back home from the realms of death. Now, there is reports, before we get into any speculation here, there are reports that suggest that this is actually retconned. So, uh, the dialogue here is actually not supposed to be there, and that it has been changed, that this is early dialogue based on something that they had planned originally, uh, and that it will change eventually. The, the problem that I have with this is, Blizzard said pretty early on in the Shadowlands, uh, sort of throughout Shadowlands, very early on, that there isn't going to be any time skip. Um, Ian said that the time works differently in the Shadowlands before Shadowlands launched. Then at the launch of Shadowlands, actually in an interview, he was asked about this and the potential for a time skip. And that's already when Ian sort of reiterated or, or iterated on what he said previously and said, well, actually people misunderstand. It's more like a dream. So the same time is still passing. It's not as if Shadowlands, you know, a year in the Shadowlands is four years in Azeroth or anything like that. Uh, it's purely that it feels longer. It doesn't, time doesn't matter really within the realms of death, but time still goes the same as it always goes. And also this time skip doesn't seem to be, and maybe this is where Blizzard didn't lie because Blizzard simply said that extra time didn't pass on Azeroth before uh, or during our time in the Shadowlands. According to what Matthias Shaw is saying here, it's the time passed after. So there is a bit of a time skip. Could it be that the first cinematic we log into is several years later and then bam, now the Dragon Isles are opening up and uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. We know that this expansion is going to be very timey-wimey, so I kind of have to go into the potential of this being part of maybe some elaborate time skip by the bronze dragon flight it may actually eventually turn into a scenario where we move forward in time and this is where this conversation happens right now that's not where this conversation happens so what exactly is the implications of this on the face of it not much uh insofar as it's a time skip but everything seems to be going the same way as it always has but it does provide Blizzard with a, a lot of interesting opportunities for look-back content. So, during the time that have passed, 
that we, as players, are not aware of. Which is going to be very interesting in terms of how Blizzard implements this. Mainly because, what have we been doing during the time that have been skipped that we don't remember what we've been doing? Does that make sense? Like, if Blizzard did a time skip, uh, it means that X number of years passed, but the players weren't playing for those years, so why do the players not know that X number of years have passed? Um, could we actually get... Could the the patch content, so the pre-patch, maybe include some kind of time travel uh, event? Um, is that possible at all? Is it possible that, that we could see a time travel event? I, I'm not sure. I really don't know how this is going to play out with... Uh, with any sort of chronological ordering because it does open some very unique playstyle abilities because during the time that have now been skipped that the player is probably going to have to just at the end of the day sort of relent and the player is just going to have to accept the fact that time passed that they weren't actually playing and that they weren't actually part of the story um, but it does then provide Blizzard with some interesting abilities in terms of going to other threats that may have developed during our time skip. So while we were playing but not playing, um, and I don't know if I'm even expressing myself correctly here, but while this all was happening, there is also now this uh, sort of, mm, how do I put this? Uh, there were things that happened. Uh, maybe enemies that, that sort of took place or, or, or t grabbed a foothold in places that they weren't supposed to. Maybe, uh, you know, the world have changed in considerable ways one way or the other. And that might create some very interesting stories uh, for World of Warcraft, you know, uh, to look back on during Dragonflight. But that's not actually the reason why I want to talk about this. The thing that I want to talk about is Anduin, very specifically. So Rathian is looking for Anduin. Um, there is actually also the opportunity that this is actually meant to happen much later in the expansion and that this by accident was included in the game. So this is actually meant to only launch, say, a year from now um, or maybe two years from now, something like that. Although, again, mm, I, I don't think so. But anyways, uh, the, the, the real thing that I want to look to is Anduin. It means that Anduin is going to be away for a really long time. It means that we are not going to see Anduin for a really long time. We also get some really interesting information around Anduin not being on Azeroth or potentially not being on Azeroth. Matthias Shaw says that he has followed up on countless reports and that not only did they not find... So he doesn't say that by the time they got there, the king had already been gone. He says that the reports have proven untrue. So the reports that claim that they have cited Anduin are untrue. Anduin was never there. Uh, they, they found no traces of Anduin, which suggests one of two things. Either Anduin is still within the Shadowlands somewhere, or... Anduin might still be in the Maw, specifically. So Anduin may be venturing the Maw, uh, trying to find himself. Which would be weird, because what exactly would he look to find in the Maw? What exactly does he hope to find in the Maw? But they also do something very interesting in setting up a potential story for the future. Pa quickly pay attention to the last lines here. Turalyon is popular with the nobles, and he's a natural leader to our soldiers. But the people of Stormwind miss their king. Why throw that line in there? I mean, sure, everyone knows that Turalyon is popular and people like Turalyon. But why throw that line in there, that specific line about Turalyon? If not, remember, we have speculation on this channel that suggests that there is a future where Anduin and Turalyon stand on two sides. And that they are not on the same side. If that is true, this does go some ways of casting a little bit of doubt. Uh, it should cast a little bit of doubt in your mind as to what they're trying to set up. Sort of highlighting that, you know, yeah, Terralian is popular. 
Greymane, of course, here, says that Anduin needs time and we will be here for him when he comes home. So we know that Greymane truly believes in Anduin and Greymane will stand by Anduin. As I said, I believe that if this split happens and Anduin and Turalyon find themselves on two sides of the, uh, of the fight, um, Greymane would join Turalyon. There was another leak, um, a conversation between Turalyon and Matthias Shaw, where Turalyon almost... Uh, it's problematic, to say the least. Let me see if I can find it quickly for you guys. Hold up. So with the power of editing, uh, here we are. I have found it, and it took no time whatsoever. But okay, so here is Turalyon and Matthias Shaw having a conversation. Spymaster Shaw, it seems the dragons are among us once again. Lord Commander, we haven't seen this level of draconic activity since the Cataclysm. I've read the SI7 reports on the black dragon Anexia, how she infiltrated Stormwind in the guise of a noble and sowed division in chaos. Indeed, she masterminded an elaborate scheme to seize control of the throne. The Dragon Queen Alexstrasza's intentions appear no honorable, but we can but can we be certain that the same is true for all of Dragonkind? It is wise to be cautious. I'll order extra security patrols. We need more than spies and guards on the city walls. Enlist the expertise of our mages. I want a foolproof method to see through those visages the dragons wear. We've put too much effort into rebuilding the strength of the Alliance to see it undone. Am I clear, Spymaster? So, you might say to yourself, Aklon, come on, man. This is just a conversation to rally and is keeping Azeroth and Stormwind safe. And you are correct, absolutely. I, I do not disagree with you one bit. But the tone. We have we've put too much effort into rebuilding the strength of the alliance. Why? I thought we were in peacetime. It, it, it I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm reading too much into this. I, I do that with the story. But I can absolutely see Turalyon upon Anduin's return being like, he will make the Alliance weaker. He can't be trusted because he's been gone for God knows how long and he's been doing God knows what. And also, we have put too much effort into rebuilding the strength of the Alliance. Um, also, there is the possible future hook they're going to be using the mages because they want the ability to see through the disguise of dragonkind. So whenever a dragon does appear as a mortal, remember dragons do have that ability. Nalfarian actually did this quite successfully for many, many occasions, uh, presenting himself as a noble when, in fact, of course, he isn't one. Um, but... What if that ability, what if the method that the mages devise is actually also the very way in which Turalyon sees the void within Anduin? If you want to watch that video, hopefully we'll have a link for you in the top right hand corner there where I speak about the potential uh, issues between Anduin and Turalyon. And there are potential, massive potential issues uh, between Anduin and Turalyon, especially since we know that Anduin has had a run-in with the Void, and that I do believe that the last time we heard from Anduin, Anduin refuses to use the light because he does not believe the light will answer him. But the Void would, and it might be that Anduin embraces the Void side of his being a lot more. Perhaps that is what he's doing within the mall. Either way, I wanted to share this with you because I think it's a pretty interesting uh, storyline. I think it's it's definitely interesting in what this is going to mean when Anduin finally returns. It also tells us that Anduin is going to be gone for some time or that he has been gone for quite a lot of time. And what is the new Anduin actually going to look like? How much change is Anduin actually going to have undergone as a result of him being gone for this long? 
So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing where the story ends and how the story plays out. Let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about it. Remember to hit the like button, also hit the subscribe button uh, if you haven't already. And if you want to be one of the cool people on the screen, hit the links in the description down below. Become a patron, a YouTube member, or join us live over on Twitch. All of the links is in the description down below. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, be kind to each other, be good to each other, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace out, fam.